The barrier for content creation has only gotten easier with the advancement of camera technology and its affordability. Nowadays, you have people creating entire feature length films with just their smartphone. Crazy, right? This just goes to show that if you wanna create high quality content for YouTube or TikTok, you don't need an expensive camera and you don't need fancy camera gear. Really, all you need to make sure is that you have good lighting and you know the fundamentals of your camera and videography. So if you're looking to get into content creation or you're just looking to upgrade from your current camera, then this video will help you decide because I'm gonna go through what I think are the four best cameras for content creation. Let's move these other cameras to the side for now because we're gonna start with the most convenient and best camera and that's gonna be your smartphone. In my case, it's the iPhone 14 Pro Max. One common phrase that you've probably heard by now is that the best camera is the one that's in your pocket. And that cannot be more true, especially in today's world because our smartphones are just so powerful I think we underrate them a lot of the time. Almost all smartphone cameras can shoot in 4K resolution at 60 frames per second, and then a lot of smartphones out there can also shoot in super slow-mo at 120 frames per second. And if you have one of the more recent iPhone Pro models or an Android that's up to date, then you can even shoot videos and photos in RAW. And what shooting in RAW basically means is that you get to work with some larger file sizes because they keep a lot more detail in the image. When you're out and about, it's just so easy to pull out your phone, take a quick video or a picture of whatever your surroundings are. So this is why it's the most convenient camera. So yeah, don't sleep on your smartphone because it's very capable at the end of the day just do me a favor and please don't use the normal camera app that comes with your iphone don't don't use it it's trash while the normal camera app on your iphone may be quick and easy to learn it honestly doesn't give you that many features that you would like to upgrade the level of your content in order to get the most out of the iphone's camera you're going to need to use a third-party camera app like blackmagic camera app or something similar the blackmagic camera app is free to download i use this literally every day when i'm filming my content and it allows you to access all of the features that's in your camera so that you can get the most out of it. This allows you to customize things like ISO, white balance, frame rate, and shutter speed so that you can get the highest quality out of whatever video or photos that you're taking. And if you don't know what any of these terms mean, then I highly recommend that you go and do a little bit of research on them because they are fundamental to your camera settings. Honestly, you should really master these fundamentals before you ever even consider upgrading to a dedicated camera because mastering these will allow you to level up your content so much quicker. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below to another video that I think is super helpful when it comes to learning the fundamentals of videography and cameras. Now, when I started creating content, I only used my iPhone. I created a bunch of TikToks and Instagram Reels, and it wasn't until I upgraded to YouTube long form videos that I decided to go for a dedicated camera. So before we move on to the next camera, let's just quickly answer why should you use your smartphone? Well, it's convenient, it's very capable, and it probably doesn't cost you any extra money since you already have one. And if you're wondering how it looks to actually record with your iPhone, well, this is an example right here. I'm using the same lighting setup and everything that I have for my main camera. Just wanted to give you an idea of what the quality looks like when using the Blackmagic camera app and your iPhone. And I'm gonna make sure to list the camera settings in this video. Now let's move on to my first dedicated camera and what I think is really good for content creation is the Sony ZV-1. Having a dedicated camera instead of using your smartphone phone does have its benefits. Now you can keep all of your photos and videos that you took for content creation separate from your photo library on your iPhone, or now you don't have to drain your iPhone's battery whenever you're out filming content. And if you're looking to upgrade from your smartphone but don't wanna spend thousands of dollars yet on a fancy big camera and fancy lenses, then I think this is a really good option. The Sony ZV-1 is compact. It has a larger image sensor than a lot of smartphones, which means that more light can come in and you get more quality and detail out of your photos and videos. You can record high quality 4K videos at both 30 and 24 frames per second. And you can also record slow-mo, but at 1080p resolution and 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. But another huge benefit of having a dedicated camera like the Sony ZV-1 is that you have access to a lot more features and customization when it comes to getting the best image quality. Another reason this camera is honestly goaded for content creation is because it's so compact and it's great for vlogging. It even has this nice and convenient flip out screen so that when you're recording yourself, you can make sure that you're in frame and everything looks good. And it's a lot better than using your smartphone's front camera to see yourself because your front camera on your smartphone is never as good as the back camera. 
This was my main camera for a very long time, and I'll show you what the quality looks like from some of my previous YouTube videos with filming with this camera. And brand new, the Sony ZV-1 retails for about $750, which you can probably find a lot cheaper on Facebook Marketplace or other secondhand places. But what's good about this price is that once you get this camera, you don't have to worry about buying extra lenses or too many other accessories because it's an all-in-one package. So in conclusion, why should you get this camera? Well, it's great if you want to upgrade from your smartphone but don't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars because this is well under $1,000 and you're looking to go to a dedicated camera or if your smartphone is just really not that new and you're looking for a camera to start filming your content. Next on the list, we have one of my absolute favorite cameras that I've gotten recently, and it's the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. I'm just gonna go ahead and say this, but I think this is the best vlogging camera ever created. Like not only is this camera super small and compact, but you can record both horizontal and vertical video at just the flick of your thumb. In horizontal mode, you can record at 4K 60 frames per second, and when you switch it to vertical, it can only record at 3K 60 frames per second. What I also love is that it has a built-in gimbal so that when you're recording videos and your hand is shaking around a lot, you can make sure that your video is gonna come out super smooth. And if you're the type that gets a little bit self-conscious when you're recording yourself in public, well, this thing is so small that it's almost unnoticeable. The Osmo Pocket 3 also allows you to shoot in a color mode called D-Log M. When you record in D-Log M, the image is gonna look really washed out, but don't worry because you can fix this all in video editing. Whenever you edit any videos recorded in a log format, you can use things like color grading and LUTs to help get the most detail and quality out of your video. So I'm recording with the Osmo Pocket 3 right now, and here's what it looks like before color grading. And this is what it looks like after you go through the color grading process. If you don't know what color grading is and you wanna dive a little bit deeper into that, I'll make sure to leave some helpful links in the description. But yeah, I haven't even scratched the surface on all of the features that the Osmo Pocket 3 has, which allows you to make really creative videos. And personally, even though I don't do a lot of vlogging, I found this to be the best B cam for my content. I mainly use this camera to get those nice and smooth product shots of all of my tech and gadgets, or if I'm just taking videos of my computer setup or something like that. The Osmo Pocket 3 retails for about $500 brand new, but before you make a decision, let me tell you why you should get this. If you travel a lot and like to document your experience, or you just really like to vlog everything that you do, then this camera is perfect. Or if you're someone like me who's a tech creator and just really wanted a good secondary camera to go with your main one, then I also think that this camera is perfect. It honestly has the benefits of a bigger dedicated camera while also being smaller than your smartphone. Now let's move on to the last camera in the list and that's the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. I've been recording with it this whole time, so let me go ahead and swap the cameras out real quick. So now I'm recording on the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, and the camera that I have in my hands here is the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II, and the lens that's attached to it is the Sigma 16mm lens. As you can probably tell, this is where we move away from the beginner cameras to the more intermediate and advanced. And it's the first camera in this list that has interchangeable lenses, which gives you a lot more customization when it comes to getting that right perfect shot. This Sigma lens that I have attached is a wide angle lens, which means that it's able to capture more objects and background in your video. But depending on what kind of videos you want to create, you can swap this out and choose one of the many other lenses that are available to get the best quality for your video. This is the camera that I upgraded to from the Sony ZV-1, and it was for three main reasons. One, the interchangeable lens. Two, this is an APS-C sensor, which means it's larger and captures more detail than the Sony ZV-1 sensor. And three, this camera can shoot in a color profile called Sony S-Log3, which captures even more details and colors that I can take advantage of in post-production in my video editing process. It has honestly been perfect as my main camera. I love the quality of my talking head type videos like this one. But it's also a good vlogging camera because it does have the flip out screen just like the Sony ZV-1 does. And overall, the camera body itself is pretty compact when you compare it to other cameras that have an APS-C sensor. So if you wanted to use this for vlogging, you totally could, but I'd argue one of the other cameras in the list is probably a better option. Another thing that I love about this camera is that it has AI enhanced autofocus. So when I'm recording a video like this and I put an object close to the camera, it focuses on that object instantly 
and when I pull it away, it's back on my face and it's so quick, I it's almost unbelievable. But anyways, I only touched on some of my favorite features of this camera. There is so much more packed into this thing that would take honestly an hour to go through them all. The Sony ZV-E10 Mark II camera body alone retails for about $1,000 and the Sigma lens retails for a little bit under 500, but you can find the lens secondhand for a lot cheaper, trust me. And I'll make sure to leave a link to all of the items discussed in this video in the description. So in total for this camera and lens, you're probably spending around 12 to $1,500, but why should you get this? Well, if you're looking to upgrade your content and experiment with interchangeable lenses and shoot high quality videos with Sony S-Log3, then this camera is pretty much perfect for you. Even more important, if you don't wanna spend upwards of two grand for some of the higher end film cameras, but still want a comparable image quality, then I highly recommend this camera here. I really hope this video was helpful if you're looking for a camera to start your content creation journey or if you're looking to upgrade your current camera, I hope this video was still helpful. Just remember, when it comes to having high quality videos, it's less about what fancy camera you have and more about things like lighting and composition and mastering the fundamentals of videography, honestly. The things like ISO, shutter speed, white balance that I talked about before, master those, please. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.